In this video, I show you the 3D board elements that I made for Green Horde Zombicide. But before we get into today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. I love all of you and the support that you give me enables me to produce content like this. Also want to share the GGGG picks. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this past month of March of 2023, Manny R received the $50 credit towards Terrainify. Brandon S and John K received $25 credits towards LV427. Aaron and Stephanie R received the printed and painted Highlands Rebellion Fence and Tower. Big Body Hazard and Thomas S received pledges for the Highlands Rebellion Kickstarter. Northwind received the Jakarta 10 watt laser. And Steve M received $100 to go towards the Maladum Kickstarter. And for this month of April of 2023, we will continue to have a $50 credit towards Terrainify where they provide STL files, printed files, or painted and flocked files. We also have two $25 credits going towards LV427 Sci-Fi Terrain. And also we have this game that one of my Patreon supporters gave me for giveaway that he received from Adepticon. This is Pirates of Skydock. Use the link below to go to my Patreon page to find out more information as we hope to add more to the list as the month goes along. So make sure you click on this video to see part two of my Zombicide 3D board that I created using Fat Dragon Games, the Legacy Village set. That's going to show you all of the files that you can use to play Zombicide Black Plague. And the timing of this video is coming out really well because Simon just launched their Kickstarter for White Death, which is a standalone expansion for Zombicide Black Plague, the medieval themed version of Zombicide. And up to this point, this continues to be my favorite version of Zombicide, not in the least because I can create this awesome 3D board. I did kickstart the original Black Plague campaign, but didn't do so for Green Horde. But I was able to purchase Green Horde um, once it came to market. Wasn't really sad to lose out on all of the Kickstarter exclusives because it's, I already have a billion miniatures anyway. And with the addition of White Death, which I think I will also be backing. That will pro provide some additional information, some new themes as well. And I'm already looking at some of the boards to see how I can create that castle wall. But regarding Green Horde, here I have it integrated with the Black Plague uh, buildings. And in some of the custom missions that I've made, I definitely do have all of the elements together. But over here, we do see the hedges as well as the flooded streets that is found in Green Horde. And also I printed out these spiked barriers that is used in the game too. Also, you're gonna see the Necromantic Dragon from the Friends and Foes box and a variety of different zombies on the board. Now the approach that I had for the Green Horde tiles is a little bit different. So all of this outdoor terrain, I actually got those files from Kraken Studios. They had a Kickstarter for some sci-fi terrain and I actually used these. Use the timestamps below because towards the end of the video, I do close-ups and explain in more detail how I printed out these files. And I also have a tutorial on how to pour resin into these flooded street files. So if you need any guidance or help with how I did that, again, at the end of the video. Now, those who did back the Green Horde Kickstarter, you were able to buy 3D hedges but they're super expensive if you try to buy them on the secondary market. So I actually modified these hedges that uh, are part of a pack from Printable Scenery. Again, I'm gonna have links below if you are interested in purchasing those files. Again, these are a little bit modified so that it fits onto these boards. I think there's a free version that I saw on Thingiverse if you didn't want to pay, but I just like the details that's found on these hedges from Printable Scenery. So that's the route that I went. Part of me did wonder if I should have magnetized these walls as if you bump them a little bit, they do move around. But so far they have worked out fine in terms of gameplay, hasn't been a big deal. And again, just the look of them looks really cool. The flooded streets as well turned out really good. I did over tint the second batch of resin. And because of that, it's a little bit darker, but the first batch, can you can see the texture of the cobblestone down at the bottom. 
And so I feel like my first batch was a little bit better. But overall, I think having sort of these flooded streets, it makes it really, really clear. Because even on the tiles, the printed tiles, um, I find it a little bit difficult to figure out what's going on. But this makes it super clear what is what and what is flooded. And I think um, just, again, adds to the immersion of the game. Even though I have some of these crates and barrels sort of floating in the water. They don't really get in the way of piling in all of the zombies onto the squares. And additionally, each one of these squares is actually a four inch by four inch, whereas on the boards, pre-printed boards, they are three inch by three inch. So you're getting, you're gaining a little bit more space because I know um, you can have hordes and hordes of zombies on each square. Now, getting back to White Death, that campaign is going to be ending. And I'm a little bit disappointed because at least here at the beginning of the campaign, there is no option to buy any of the previous material. Now, Simon campaigns do tend to add more things that you can buy. And there is sort of an ultimate version that you can buy. So my hope is for those of you who weren't able to get in or are having a hard time finding a commercial version of either Black Plague or Green Horde that you'll be able to jump in on this Kickstarter campaign. So make sure that you do check out the link and go uh, every once in a while to the page to see if they've added any other material. I'm not 100% sure how available Black Plague is right now, but it might be difficult. And so far looking at the terrain tiles, both in Quackalope's review video, as well as what you can see on the campaign page, I'm really glad that they stuck to basically the same design tiles so that I can use all of this terrain with that set. Although I don't think they're gonna have um, water, uh, unfrozen water on the tiles there. But I did see that they did have ruined buildings, but I did uh, end up with this ruined wall, which I think will go well with some of the ruined buildings in that set. And this was a file that I downloaded from Fat Dragon Games and I did modify these as well because I felt like it wasn't broken up enough. So just aesthetically, I found um, that my modified walls actually looks really good. Originally, these are for a abomination that has the ability of breaking down walls, but because this new White Death has uh, sort of ruined buildings, I'm gonna be using these and maybe I'll even modify more uh, some of these ruined walls. Also, it looks like the wall that goes across the scenario, I can definitely use the same um, sort of set, stone set that I have here for the Wolfsburg expansion towers because each one of these are individualized to a four by four space. But honestly, I will probably go ahead and create a new um, wall file uh, just so that it's easier to assemble because this is really modular. Even the crenellations come off like this individually because you need to be able to configure the tower in multiple ways. But it looks like at least some of the screenshots that I saw with White Death that is just one long wall going straight across. So just for ease of setup, I will probably go ahead and um, fuse some files together and that will print off as one piece. Now, one thing I really did want to mention quickly is that I did convert this magnetic base to be able to take these four millimeter diameter by two millimeter height um, barrel magnets uh, in lieu of the five millimeter ball magnets, which my original set was using. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it is so difficult right now to get those ball magnets, but relatively easy and inexpensive to get the barrel magnets. It's the same barrel magnets that you're gonna be using at the bottom of these, as well as for any other piece that you're magnetizing on this set. So hopefully for those of you who are tackling this project, uh, this will help you a lot. I still have to do the stone foundation, but those of you who have access to these files will be able to grab those if you don't have access to the ball magnets. Again, use the timestamps below where I sort of explain how to uh, work with the polarity of these in order for them to work. Again, I think this set is really awesome. Uh, what I love about Zombicide is that it is really friendly for beginner gamers. Uh, I even had some of my daughter's friends who don't normally game that much. They ended up playing and really liking this game. So the game is simple enough, but um, is tactically uh, challenging where it holds your attention that um, I think it's a great entry level game 
for even non-gamers. And then when you have all of this 3D board, just a presence on the table makes it that much more awesome. So make sure to like and subscribe to my channel because once I do get White Death, I will be again creating that wall. And I don't think I'll be making specifically snow covered terrain. I think I'll just use the terrain that I have right now but definitely we'll be making some modifications so that it fits with that game better. Also, if you are planning on tackling this project, I am willing to share my files for free, but you do need to PM me with a screenshot of the receipt from Fat Dragon Games that you have purchased all of those files. And then at that point I will share. And Tom Tullis from Fat Dragon Games, if you're watching this, Please, I made an offer that I would give you all the files so that you can package it all together and you can sell it as a package because there's a ton of people that have reached out to me saying they're interested in doing this project and it would be fantastic if I can uh, cut out being the middleman. I already did all the work. All you have to do is package it and put it up on your website. That'll be make it easier instead of everyone constantly PMing me for these files. So... Tom, if you're listening, I'm totally willing to do that, so reach out to me as well. Stick around for the tutorial on how to use resin to create these water tiles, as well as how I made these. Otherwise, happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time. So here are all of the tiles um, before I pour the resin in. And as you can see here, um, I did glue down some of these barrels and bits. I did print these out on my resin printer and just cut them at various angles and that just creates some flotsam and bits that's going to be in the streets and then you want to get some kind of two-part resin clear resin and i get envirotech site because you can buy this at hobby lobby or at michael's and um, i have the big bottles here you can get the smaller ones too and then you want two cups, and uh, clear cups is better, where I just went ahead and marked off with a Sharpie, just equal amounts. Um, this looked like my original marks look too small, so we'll see. I'm just guesstimating uh, how much resin I'm going to need. And then you're just going to pour part A in one and part B in another. And it's always a good idea to wear some nitrile gloves. I have mismatching gloves because this is what I have. And then just have a napkin at hand to wipe. So now that you have equal amounts, you're just going to pour back and forth using a stir mixing stick. Try to get as much of this in there as possible. And make sure you scrape the sides of the cup too. And try not to get a lot of bubbles into it. I mean, it's going to be inevitable and the bubbles should um, come out. But because we don't have a vacuum chamber, um, you might still have some bubbles that are inside of your um, thing but that might just add to the environment maybe because it's flooded streets so it doesn't have to be like super clean and once you mix this up really well in one cup you're going to pour this whole thing back into this cup and do that just a couple of times to ensure that you have a good mix one thing um, I forgot to mention is that um, you'll notice that my hardener is pretty yellow and that's because my resin is old. So if you want, like for other projects, a super clear um, resin, you want to just make sure that your resin is relatively new or else it will dry with this yellowish cast to it. Now, because we're adding coloring, it, that doesn't matter too much. In fact, I'm gonna add some coloring right now to it. All I have is some burnt umber. And I'm gonna add some drops to it. Normally, I add in inks to um, these um, things because inks sort of work better, but I want it to be more opaque 
and not clear that's why I'm adding just regular paint to it and I'm trying to keep it a little bit translucent like not super dark so that you can't see the bottom so it's a little bit of an experiment to see how much paint you need to add and this is a good grimy color Add a little bit more brown. You can add greens too if you want. Um, but all the pictures that I see of floods, it's the water is just really brown. Okay, I'm going to pour it back in here another time. This might be overkill, but I like making sure that I have a good mixture. And let me um, just sort of stop here because you can sort of get a sense of what color it will be and how opaque it will be once you pour it. Because remember, it's going to be pretty thin. All right, so this is about where um, we got the color. And I hope that it is opaque enough. But we're committed, basically. Look at how much of this we made. And you got to be careful because there's a tendency of overflowing. Because look how viscous this is. So you have to be careful. Yes, I think. I think I like this level of brown and opacity. And don't worry too much if you get it on top of your barrels and, you know, floaties. Uh, because um, theoretically they should all be wet, right? So it's not a big deal. I think, I think I'm going to try to avoid hitting the tops of them. But if you do, it's not that big a deal. So probably what I'll do is I will um, wait for it to smooth out. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is just make sure that your table is super flat. Because this stuff will um, level out. And if your table isn't flat, then it will be obviously tilted one, one direction. There, so I'll let that settle out and I'll go to another square and we'll keep um, pouring. Alright, so as you can see, um, this was a lot less than I thought it was going to be. So I um, first did a first pour and now I have enough to just top these off. And I don't know if you can tell from um, this angle, but there is a meniscus sort of uh, like this that goes like this. So it's a little bit different from water. Um, in that the um, surface tension is a little bit different than water. So just very carefully just add a little bit more until you put in enough that you reduce the meniscus that you notice in the corners. A little bit of that is going to be inevitable. And you definitely, definitely do not want to over pour. Um, because it will top it will go over the edge if you over pour. So just be super careful and realize that it's like molasses. It will take some time uh, when you pour in the center for it to reach the edges. So just, just you know, it's always better to under pour and add more later than to over pour and then you'll have a huge mess on your hands. And I will definitely have to remix um, some more. I, I totally um, miscalculated how much I was going to need. So here's something super interesting. So uh, the bubbles do eventually come to the top and I don't know if you can tell that some of them are popping on their own. But if you use carbon dioxide, basically your breath, um, it actually clears out the bubbles pretty well. So after a little bit of time, just go ahead and breathe on it. I don't know if you can see, but the bubbles pop. It's 
and it makes it really clear. So as you can see here, that amount was only enough to fill half of the 14 tiles. So I definitely need to go and buy more, mix up another batch and do the rest of it. You know, you notice here, I did put some in and got some spills in some of these. Totally okay when you pour over it, even if it dries um, completely here, uh, that won't matter at all. Also, um, Go ahead and put a cover over this. I just use a storage bin and I'll cover over it because any lint in the air during the 24 hours that you need to wait for this to dry will come on top of it and will mar the surface. And so you definitely want to avoid that as much as possible. I already see some lint that has fallen on top even since uh, making this. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this up. Uh, in the meantime, I'll have to go get more and do the rest of them. But that's basically how you do it. Not very hard. All right, so this is 24 hours later. You can see that it is all dried up. And the second batch that I made of the resin, I added a little bit too much of the brown paint, so it is really hard to see. The first batch, I think, had the right amount of brown pigment in there. And as you can see, there is um, some lint that got on top, as well as a, a few bubbles. But again, that's okay because this is a flooded street. There should be a lot of debris and detritus in the water. And I think uh, they look really cool. And believe me when I say that all of your friends are going to want to touch all of this water stuff. But that's fine um, because it is completely dry. And your miniatures can sit on there fine. And Again, these are not magnetized because I couldn't figure out a way to stick magnets in here without ruining the look. So this is what it looks like. So this is the modified um, base for the magnets and I filled in each of the slots that normally took the 5mm ball magnets and converted it so that you can slip in the 4x2 uh, disc magnets which were the ones that you stuck into the sections anyway. So um, I just printed this first piece out and what you want to do is you need to keep track of polarity so that um, you're consistent with, on, in this case, every left one you want it to be the same polarity and then you switch the magnets around and that will make it so that the polarity um, is consistent. And I made it tight so that they won't fly out. And then once you glue the top to it, you know, that'll hold them in place even more securely. Now, if you can tell here, I did make it really thin. And so where the wood um, uh, gets thin, uh, you can actually see the magnet, which, uh, again, I don't think is a big problem because that magnet is not going to come out. And when you spray paint this um, with a base dark brown it will cover it up so that mostly you won't be able to tell or see and then uh, like I said once once you have it have the polarity of the magnet going this way just flip this around like this so that now the polarity is going the opposite direction and do all four corners this way and the other good thing about this is this is backwards compatible so if you do have some of your bases Having the five millimeter ball magnets, uh, this will still work with those. And I have told some of you who are working on this project that you don't even have to magnetize the basis if you don't want to, because I found that the weight of the tiles actually works fine. So right now this is um, the opposite polarity, whereas this one works. And so when I print out the second one, I'll show you how these fit together. So this is how it works. No matter which side, um, because you have the alternating polarities, it will always work. So there you go. These are the four kinds of um, outdoor terrain pieces or field terrain pieces. And I actually printed these upright where I um, created the support blocks Otherwise, when you try to print something this thin, uh, it's just impossible. It won't stay on the build plate. 
um, but by printing it vertically like this, uh, you just get a lot more detail versus if you print it flat, you're going to get a lot of contour lines um, along here. So the result is that these are just a lot more detailed in the print by uh, going vertical. It does take more time doing it this way, but I think it's worth the effects on here. And of course, these are all magnetized as well. And this is where um, I took these uh, hedges from printable scenery and just modified them so that they can fit. So you can either put them across here in the middle or on one side or the other. And with this tile set from Kraken Studios, um, even though the texture is really cool, you can, it, uh, with all these rocks and everything, I had to flatten it out or to cut out these pieces so that these could sit on there uh, flat. Otherwise, it was like rock, you know, rocking back and forth and wouldn't stay straight. So I went ahead and just uh, cut out those pieces so that this can fit flat on them. While still maintaining a lot of the shape to it. So in spots like this where you can straddle both sides if you want. I sort of, in retrospect, wish that I would have magnetized these so that it would have connected down here to the magnets in the base. But um, it's not 100% necessary. And there is a free file version that you can use uh, that someone else made that mimics the design of the 3D terrain that was from the Kickstarter. Um, but I actually like the texture and look of these ones from Printable Scenery. Uh, and look at this one, there's actually a statue in the middle, so I like these walls actually better. So these hedges, I think, work super well. And then these two are the barriers, and this is also from Printable Scenery. And I think they turned out pretty cool, and it works on this tile set as well.